This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1029, How Visualizing Helped Me Attract True Love, by Karen Stanley of MrsKarenStanley.com. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining me today on ORD. I am your host and narrator, Greg Audino, here with you seven days a week now to feature content that is sure to help you build stronger relationships in your life. I'm so glad to be reading from another post courtesy of Karen Stanley today, a post that to me is a lot more layered and educational than one might think. More on that after the reading, though. For now, we're going to hear what she has to say and start optimizing your life. How Visualizing Helped Me Attract True Love by Karen Stanley of MrsKarenStanley.com I was hiking with my husband yesterday morning and remembered the hours and hours and hours and hours I spent visualizing and playing the movie of the life that I wanted in my mind every day, all day. I visualized that my husband loved to hike, and my future husband was walking right beside me the entire time. I visualized this day after day after day for 17 months. If I had stopped visualizing over and over every day for 17 months, then I would still be single. I believe that this is the secret to finding true love, not quitting, not stopping visualizing. But it was hard to do sometimes. So I created life hacks and happiness hacks and belief hacks, which are all the same. All of the hacks and tools I drummed up helped me to stay on the vibe and keep the belief that true love was possible and it was possible for me to find real love. You have to believe it, and there are so many things thrown at us that try and tear us down and try and make us believe that true soulmate love is hopeless and not possible. I knew that visualizing was the key to creating that vision into your own reality, but I got off course. I would get upset with my current reality, and I would start believing that it may not be possible for me to find true love. So. I went and did what I love to do most, hike. When I started up the mountain, I blasted my love playlist. Any lyrics and any music that helped me believe that real love was possible for everyone. I hiked up that mountain day after day, visualizing everything, each of the lyrics from each song from my love playlist. If I'm wrong for thinking out of the box and thinking that true love does exist and thinking that there is something out there manifesting me right now, then I don't want to be right. I manifested my soulmate by utilizing tools that helped me keep believing that it was happening, and my soulmate was on his way to me right now. Not only that it was possible to find true love after divorce and abuse and bankruptcy and foreclosure, but that it was happening right now. Lucky I'm in love with my best friend. If it's true for Jason Mraz, then it could be true for Karen, the crazy single mom raising two kids alone in a rented house with gross carpets. I created daily routines and wrote in my journal every day, reminding myself of everything that I had right now, focused on all the love I had right now, all the things I am grateful for right now. It keeps you out of the thoughts of lack. This helps you shut down that inner voice in your head telling you it's hopeless, that you will be single forever, and that all men suck. I created ways to drown that voice out because she was always coming at me telling me that my dreams were not possible and no one wants what I want and no one wants to marry me. Those are lies. When we focus on what we want and what we currently have, we don't see lack and we don't manifest lack. We manifest more love and abundance. When we focus on all the love we currently have in our life right now, we create and attract more love into our lives. I had two amazing kids who were healthy. I had a home. We had lots of family who helped me. We had sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, and a million cousins that loved us. We have love all around us if that's what we look for. Conversely, if you focus on what you don't have, like a husband, romantic partner, or a wife, then you create more of that lack. I wrote down at least three things every day that I was grateful for. If you can't think of anything, be grateful you have a heartbeat. My friend lost her 12-year-old son last week. You have a heartbeat. Then you have a second chance. Trent Shelton says every day is a second chance. I love that. 
Every day we have a heartbeat, we have a chance to create love and the life we truly want to live. If you have a bed to sleep in and food to eat, you are blessed. Be grateful for the little things and you kick off the day thinking about all the good things that are already in your life. It feels so much better. Visualize everything you will be doing with your future husband. He's there lying next to you in bed. He kisses you good morning. He goes and makes your coffee. Perhaps he's in the shower with you. He's talking to you on the phone on your way to work. Visualize every aspect of your morning routine as if he was already there with you. It's an incredibly powerful exercise. But just like physical exercise, nothing happens unless you consistently do it day after day after day. Every day gets you closer to your goal. And you know I feel that a relationship goal is just like any other goal, and it can be accomplished with the same principles as any other goal you have accomplished up until today. Everything you see around you starts as a thought in your mind. Your shoes, your purse, your car, your breakfast, everything. You thought about it first, and then it became a reality. The higher the goal, the more intention we need to place on it. That comes with constant visualization. I visualized every aspect of my life with my husband and created the movie in my brain every day. Everything I wrote in my soulmate list is my reality now. Everything I consistently visualized is my reality now. We go hiking every Sunday. If it worked for one person, it can work for everyone. It takes tools, morning rituals, journaling, visualizing everything you want to create in your dream relationship. And it takes faith. Faith is believing in something you can't see. Just because you can't see him doesn't mean he's not there. He's out there manifesting you right now. You just listened to the post titled, How Visualizing Helped Me Attract True Love by Karen Stanley of MrsKarenStanley.com A very driven and confident post from Karen today. Love to see that. And to me, this one holds a lot of importance. So Karen acknowledges that even if she's wrong about the strength in her beliefs leading her to her husband, then she doesn't want to be right. And some might be looking for more evidence in a post like this, or, or not something so bent on faith and, you know, individual belief systems. But what Karen is doing, and what we can all stand to do, is acting as though anything is possible, regardless of whether or not it actually is. You see, the objective in doing this is not being right necessarily, but making progress, at least to me. If you believe, or at least pretend to believe, that something is possible, your accompanying actions will help you chip away at that goal and ultimately work towards something important to you, which is all we can really ask for, that sense of progress. This idea can be applied to love, sports, work, whatever. If you pretend it's possible, you will be in the driver's seat for making change. So, get to work, people, because this episode has come to a close. Really appreciate you being here with me today for a great post and an important discussion thanks to Karen Stanley. I sure hope you liked it as much as I did, and I hope you'll join me again for tomorrow's episode. That's where your optimal life awaits.